Let me ask you a difficult question about the darker side of human nature, of human power, of institutions. What's your view on the long history and widespread reports of sexual abuse of children by a Catholic priest? So this is a, a difficult topic, but maybe an important one to shine a light on. Yeah, it's awful, you know, and it's it's been a problem. Go back to Peter Damien, back in the 11th century, was talking about it. So it's been a problem, and whenever really sinful human beings have been in close proximity to children, we we find this issue. Has it been around the church? Yes. Um, has it surfaced in a kind of sickening way in the last 30 years? Absolutely. Um, I'm glad the church has made important strides, and it has. Um, back in 2002, there was a thing called the Dallas Accords, where the bishops of America put a lot of these protocols in place that really have been effective at ameliorating this problem. Uh, the numbers spiked in the 70s and 80s, and that's been demonstrated over and over again. And then they fell dramatically after that. So that's not to excuse anything, but it's to say I think progress has been made with it. What's the impulse to secrecy? Yeah, well, to protect institutions, you know, and that's always, that's a sinful uh, instinct. Uh, I'm not altogether. I mean, sure, an institution is, is worth protecting, but if it reaches the point where you're indifferent to people's uh, well-being, then you're in trouble. So institutions' role should be transparent and honest with the sins of its members and of sure. itself. Sure, yeah. So maybe you can speak to the fact, uh, as a priest, a bishop, as part of Catholicism, you're not allowed to marry, you're not allowed to have sex, uh, you're, you're sworn to celibacy. Mm-hmm. What is, what is behind that idea? What is the sort of, we've talked about some broad stroke yeah. uh, ideas of love. Yeah. Uh, what's behind the idea of celibacy? And that's a good way to get at it. It's a path of love. So it, the church is always in favor of inculcating love. Marriage is a path of love, but so is celibacy. Um, St. Paul talks about someone who is preoccupied with the things of, of this world and family and those who are free from that are freer for doing the, the work of God. So that's kind of a pragmatic uh, justification for celibacy. And we still, I think, take that seriously. I look at my own life. I mean, celibacy has enabled me to do all kinds of things and go places and, 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 and uh, minister in a way that I could not if I had been married. So I get it. I get the pragmatic side. But I, I'm more interested in the sort of mystical side of it. Um, Remember, Jesus was challenged about the person who had, you know, a whole series of of um, husbands, and and then they all died. And so, in heaven, which one will will uh, you know which which husband will the wife have? And his answer is, is in heaven, people don't marry, and they're not given in marriage. There's a there's a higher way of love. It's a more radical way of love. It's not tied to a particular, but I think through God is tied to everybody. The celibate, and this has been from the beginning of the church. Not as a law, but there were there were celibates from the very beginning of the church, including Jesus, of course, and Paul. Um, they sense something that that way of living mystically anticipates the way we'll love in heaven. It's a sign even now within this world of how we will all love in heaven. So in that way, it's a bit like pacifists. Um, I'm glad there are pacifists in the church, and I, I've known some, you know, some very powerful uh, witnesses to pacifism. I'm glad they're pacifists because they witness even now to how we will be in heaven when every tear is wiped away and we beat our swords into plowshares, and you know, it, heaven's a place of radical peace. That some people even now live it. At the same time, I, I'm glad not everyone's a pacifist because I. I would hold with the church to just war theory that there's sometimes all we can do in this finite world is to is to fight you know uh, manifest wickedness. So and just in the same way, there's just sex. <laughs> well, no, right. I'm glad there are celibates, but I'm glad not everyone's a celibate. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't want that. I mean, because because uh, married love is a marvelous expression of, of the divine love. So that's why it's good there are some, and it's it's always been a small number. The actual experience of it, would you, uh, the spiritual nature of it, is it similar to fasting? So I've been enjoying fasting uh, recently, so not yeah. eating yeah, uh, for several days, that kind of stuff. And that somehow brings you 
even deep. I'm in general in love with everything and na with nature and everything. I see the beauty in the world, but there's a greater intensity to that when you're fasting, yeah. for example. Yeah, I, I, I might use the language of, you know, sublimation or redirection of energy and all that. Um, I, I think that's true. There's a certain sublimation of energies into um, prayer, into mysticism, into ministry, um, a redirection of energies. So it's meant to be life enhancing. The same way fasting is, it's meant ultimately to be life enhancing and make you healthier and happier. So celibacy is a, is a path of love. And I think it does involve yeah, a certain redirection of energies. I'd say that. Don't you think, do you think it's a heavy burden for some humans to bear? Sure. For some priests to bear. Is that sure? Is that the thing, given this the 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 sexual abuse scandal, um, is that the thing that breaks? No, I, I, I wouldn't tie that to celibacy. And that's been uh, demonstrated over and over again. There's a priest named Andrew Greeley who was a priest from my home diocese of Chicago. And Andy did a lot of research. He was a sociologist of religion, did a lot of research into that very question. And there really is not a correlation between celibacy per se and the sexual abuse of children or of anybody. So I, I wouldn't make that correlation. So uh, bad people, sinful people are going to do what they're going to do. I think people uh, who have a tendency toward... Uh, abusing children sexually are drawn to situations where they get ready access to yeah. kids and they get institutional cover. Yeah. So that's, you know, we can go through the list of, you know, from sports and, and boy scouts, et cetera. Um, and that's been proven again and again. So I, I would tie it more to that. I wouldn't tie it to celibacy.